Welcome internet, today we're comparing yesterday's new hotness, the Taurus G3C, to today's new hotness, which is the Taurus GX4. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the range guys, it's David with the Humble Marksman channel and we are looking at two of the guns that are very popular in the concealed carry segment. It is the Taurus G3C and the Taurus GX4. For those of you who are familiar with my channel, I didn't have great luck with my first G3C. This is my second G3C, the Toro, uh, the optics ready variant of it, but this one has been absolutely reliable for me. And the Taurus GX4, I just finished filming my first shots video and I have been very pleasantly surprised about this. So the purpose of this video is to kind of give you a look at these two guns sort of side by side. And if you're a buyer, kind of fill you in on what my thoughts on these are and maybe recommend to you which model might suit your needs better. To my YouTube manual reviewer, this is what the gun looks like on the manufacturer's website for the G3C, and this is what the gun looks like on the manufacturer's website for the GX4. Both of these guns are as they come from the box and as they come from the factory. So these guns boast similar price points. I paid $400 for the G3C. It comes in a cardboard box and now it's coming with three magazines. The early models only shipped with two, but you can call Taurus customer service and they will send you that third magazine. The GX4 comes in a clamshell case, which is more in line with like what Glock is shipping with. The GX4 is really set up to be a good inside the waistband, specifically if you carry on like the three o'clock to five o'clock area that shorter grip is going to help with printing. The G3C has a little bit longer footprint due to the pinky extension and that's going to help you hold the gun on target a little bit better. The magazines is where we should first kind of talk. So this is a 12 round magazine and this is an 11 round magazine. The 11 round magazine is significantly smaller. The GX4 mags are actually made by Mechgar in Italy whereas the G3C mags are made in Brazil by Taurus. Honestly comparing these two this is like a blued steel magazine whereas this has like an anti-friction coating. The difference in quality between the G3C and the GX4 magazine is evident when you actually load the magazines. When you load the G3C, there's a little bit of slop as kind of the follower kind of moves laterally side to side as you get the magazine progressively more full with ammo. Whereas this is just super smooth operation. This feels as good as anybody's magazine. SIG, HK, doesn't matter. This is a top tier magazine. I think for the intended use of a concealed carry civilian role, I think both these magazines are high enough quality, but in a neck beard, nerd, gun guy kind of way, this is a much better magazine. Jumping into the actual grips that come on the guns, uh, the overall proportion, the G3C is a little bit more substantial and it provides a better shooting experience because the texture on the G3C is one of the best textures anybody's putting on a plastic gun like this and the Smith & Wesson uh, M2.0s have the best texture in the game right now. That is to say the GX4 is no slouch either. It still has a very good texture because the gun is thinner. They can't make the texture stand up quite as much as they could on the G3C, but Overall, it stayed planted, and if you look closely, you can see where my dead skin came off my hands through shooting it, because the texture is plenty aggressive. Moving into the trigger, and this is where these guns are gonna kind of start to separate, because this has the old uh, Millennium trigger group that is a double action, single action. It's set between about five and six pounds, about five pounds in single action, about six pounds in the double action pull. The trigger pull on the G3C, the trigger breaks almost all the way back in the trigger guard, and that trigger reach, like where the trigger breaks for me, is so far back, my finger is bent too much. Like it's just not a very shootable trigger if you want to shoot fast. So in like a self-defense setting, if you are like panic shooting, it's honestly not the best trigger to run fast because the reset is pretty long and it just, it keeps the trigger so far back. Like the trigger reach on where this breaks versus where you get on the trigger to begin the trigger pull process. It's very difficult to manage your sights as you work through the trigger. It's not impossible, I didn't say impossible. It's just more challenging to do with how this trigger is set up. Meanwhile, the GX4 comes with an interchangeable backstrap, a feature the G3C doesn't have. So they've got two different backstraps. This presents more of like a Glock style angle, which is appropriate for a little flippy gun like this. And then they've got one that's more neutral like a p365 that said with where this trigger breaks like right there where i'm on the wall is just about perfect for my hand so i was really impressed to see this gun when i shot it really fast uh, the trigger is very very controllable i was able to maintain 
awesome accuracy at speed. The trigger reset is similarly shorter than it is on the other gun. Uh, the trigger shape being a striker fire with a dingus, there is no manual safety. They say that this is a single action only gun, which means it's probably a pre-cocked striker is what they're using. But the trigger quality of the firmness on the wall is as good as any duty grade trigger that's in the market right now. This trigger really reminds me of my Smith & Wesson M2.0. So this is actually quite a good trigger. The takedown on the guns is quite similar. They've got two levers on the side of the G3C, which is how you get the slide off, versus on the GX4, where they've got this little this little key right here. It's more almost like a Ruger in how it turns down. So they provide a keychain that has a plastic nub at the base, and that's what you can use to turn this, or you can just use a flathead screwdriver either way. And once the slides are off on the guns, you'll see that the GX4 has a much longer rail section, which makes it have less uh, slide the frame play, just feels like a higher quality gun than the G3C, which has a more typical kind of two short rail segments, kind of like right there and right there. It just kind of contributes to a higher quality feel in the GX4. So as far as how these guns actually shoot, and you're gonna expect me to say the bigger gun shoots better because it's got a bigger frame, and honestly, it would if the trigger didn't break so far back because the trigger reach is basically optimized on the GX4 between these two guns, I felt more comfortable running the GX4, the smaller gun, faster. So I was able to hold the gun on target when I was doing my fast shooting with it. I was dropping very few Charlies on my USPSA style targets, whereas the trigger break was so long and so far back in the guard on this one, I would begin to move the gun off target thinking I had already broken the shot. So I threw way more Charlies with the G3C then I did the GX4, and that is going to be a personal preference and a personal shooting style. Your mileage may vary, but I actually prefer the way that this gun hit. Both these guns are set up with Glock sights, so you can use your favorite Glock sights on these guns. As they come from the factory, the sights are usable. Both of these guns have a point of impact roughly in line with where the white dot is on the sights. So it has more of a combat hole than the cut your target in half type presentation competition shooters are probably used to. So which of these two guns would I recommend? The Honestly, the dimensions of this gun, it's not a whole lot smaller than the G3C. It is noticeably shorter in the grip and it's a little bit shorter in the muzzle than the G3C. I prefer this gun because of how the trigger is set up, but I really wish that you could take the trigger group from this gun and put it in this frame. This trigger group is just kind of weird. It has restrike capability, which I, I mean, who asked for that? Probably nobody. I think this frame is better. The texture is better. The way it feels in hand is better, but just the trigger kind of sours the thing for me. So if this gun had the same trigger as the GX4, they would be playing with fire. I think that they need to release a G4 series of pistols that takes the GX4 trigger and puts them in these frames and they would have a real winner. But my recommendation with the guns as they are today from the factory is definitely the GX4. Uh, it conceals better, it is shoots better, it seemed to be easier for me to get extreme accuracy out of this when I was kind of pinning my ears back and aiming real hard with it because of how the trigger is set up. Very predictable trigger. Taurus really, really did a good job with the GX4. So if you're somebody who likes an iron-sided G3C, if you can find a deal on a GX4, I think you'll be very pleased with how the gun turned out. What didn't I cover, guys? Let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to interact with y'all, answer any questions you might have about both of these guns. And these videos are always more fun when we interact in the comments, so get in there, guys. Let me know. And if you've made it this far, guys, I really appreciate that like. Subscribe to the channel to see future updates on these two guns. If you need a holster for your G3C, Harry's Holsters has a discount code. Use my channel name, The Humble Marksman, no spaces, and you can save 10% on an awesome holster for the G3C, and he's currently working on setting up a GX4 holster as well. And if you've made it this far, I'm going to point you at my G3C Toro review up here, and down here is my Taurus GX4 first shots video for you here. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.